It's a vision based on Aberdeen as a um, world energy city in, in 50 years' time with, with long-term jobs and, and um, prosperity. Um, it's about connecting what is now very, very disparate um, uh, parts of Aberdeen in the, in the south with Union Square, uh, in the east with the Bonacord Centre and St Nicholas Centre, and then with, with Union Street, significant connectivity there, both at surface and, and the next level down. It's about um, regenerating, revitalising, rejuvenating, um, creating a new heart for all the citizens of Aberdeen, the, the key meeting place. And most of all, it is a green city centre. It is, it is maintaining the green lung. There's the potential to um, look at much more modern gardens, along with all the gardens, to, to min maintain the different themes. Um, and, and, I mean, essentially, gar gardens, key beautiful gardens, which are part of a city centre, which people will see as they walk past, and they'll be able to go and walk through and, and, and walk on and walk off. That's all about um, the economy and jobs and prosperity. I've been extremely lucky as part of the North Sea Oil generation. Um, but the fact is Aberdeen's become very dependent. North Sea Oil and therefore is, is, is vulnerable. Um, the, the bridges to the future are international oil and gas which will produce, certainly maintain a reasonable number of jobs, but nothing like the present number. So the key is to become a major energy city, um, renewables, carbon capture, um, clean energy. That's going to be competitive. We've been very lucky in North Sea and Gas with our geographical position. We're going to have to win and compete um, for, the, uh, for the wider energy um, um, opportunities. Um, and, and the one negative, we have a number of whole range of positives right now, the one negative... Um, frankly, is our, our city centre, which, which honestly is is second rate, and and we're going to have to attract key companies here, attract and retain, attract and retain really good people here, and we need to have an urban centre commensurate with that. I mean, this is not a commercial development. Um, th this will be um, developed with um, public sector and private sector funds. So it does, it's, it's not seeking a return on its money. I, I would, someone say to me, you know, you're going you're to slip a shopping mall in the last minute. It's not that kind of development at all. I think that it's been unfortunate. I mean, I think Haldi Fraser Monroe did an excellent conceptual study, but it was a conceptual study. And all it set out to do was to prove that it was, it was in engineering terms, feasible. They actually produced this wonderful concourse here on the second level, which was, which was just great, but, but to demonstrate it was feasible. And the result was that their initial drawing simply came up with what you'd accept from a conceptual study, which was a, proving that you could, you could effectively construct it in that way. Um, I mean, it can't be flat. I mean, there's a natural topography between um, Union Terrace and Belmont Street, quite significant there, and then also between um, Union Street and, and um, Rose Mount. So it, it, it won't be a single square. It'll be segmented. There's, a, there's an auditorium, there'll be a civic square, there'll be the, the area which is right now shown as the, um, as the cultural centre, which, which hopefully will, will house um, the Peacock Arts Centre. So it'll be divided into, into, and there'll be a, a kind of cafe culture area, there'll be a lower, lower area um, going on to Belmont Street. So it will, it will follow the contours and it will be landscape and contours. Um, and, and frankly, um, if, if you look and see what other cities have done with similar areas, it could look quite spectacular. I think the beginning of my answer to that is I, I believe we can't afford not to do this for Aberdeen's medium to long term economic um, future and frankly for the fact to take Aberdeen into the 21st century this is the potential for the oil and gas industry era to make a major contribution to prosperity in the medium to long term um, in, in terms of how we, how we put together the funding um, I believe we will get £70 million from the private sector um, and with a significant start from the funds that I've, I've prepared to put up. Um, and I believe with some of the new public funding um, uh, mechanisms now available, I mean, we absolutely won't expect um, any funds to come from Avenue City Council. There's no way um, with their present problems that, um, that any of this money will come from the, the current uh, annual budget. And therefore it won't affect any of the kind of local spend programmes, so and that's very, that's very important. Uh, an example of a possible scheme, that the tax incremental finance allows local authorities to borrow against um, future rates increases. That's being used very successfully elsewhere in the UK and in Scotland. Um, and 
I mean, because Aberdeen has fared so badly in the last 20 years with funds, first of all, from the UK government, more recently from the Scottish government for urban regeneration compared to Edinburgh, Glasgow and Dundee, I mean, I believe the Scottish government will be um, reasonably sympathetic in terms of looking at a proposal which, which enables the, the funding to be done from major public regeneration funds without Aberdeen um, undertaking any real risk. So, yes, I think it can, I think it really can be funded. I think we've always seen um, a contemporary arts centre as a, an exciting development. I think the Peacock um, proposal is a great idea. Um, I actually, at the beginning, held back on um, the announcement to allow Peacock to complete its funding. So I've always, it's public fu uh, sector funding, so I've always seen it as, as, a, as a good idea. Um, but, but the fact is that all that Peacock would like to achieve in terms of size, daylight, all the things that they're going to need for a really successful contemporary arts centre will be achieved with the arts centre as part of the um, culture area within the new transformational um, square development. It'll cost less um, because um, of the structure of the building. The present uh, Peacock building is just quite dramatic, but actually three floors down into the into the um, square is really quite is in, into the gardens is really quite expensive, and it's a much better chance of viability because there's a much heavier footfall. It'll be part of the kind of, you know the most most busy the most busy part of Aberdeen. So I, I mean I, I think we can achieve. I think Peacock can achieve all that it wants to achieve for the arts community, and that's just great. But on top of that. Um, on a much wider basis, the citizens of Aberdeen will get much more significant inclusive benefits from a whole range of um, recreational, lever, um, um, leisure, cultural, sporting events, you know, mass pipe bands. Stavanger, Norway recently had a major world volleyball competition in an area much smaller than this. There's a whole range of things could be attracted to Aberdeen um, for the benefit of, of all the wider citizens. And that's, that's frankly, my interest is twofold is one, can we help improve the quality of life of the citizens of Aberdeen? And secondly, can we ensure we can produce the jobs for the future?